Sonic, the heart of your system. I'm the Order for Kit Guru. It's the weekend, but by the time you see this video in a couple of days' time, I will have attended an Intel briefing on Z390 chipset and also the 9th gen processors because Intel's going to start spreading the news and I want to be a part of it because it's in New York, you see. Uh, I do not yet have any 9th gen CPUs. They're due to come in a few days. I do, however, have quite a few Z390 motherboards. While I am yet to be briefed by Intel, there is already a great deal of information out there about Intel 9th Gen and Z390, as I said in previous Leo says. However, uh, we've also got pricing to go with that information. So, uh, the baseline uh, for AMD is that Ryzen 5 2600X is £200 here in the UK, Ryzen 7 2700X is £300. You would think that those uh, prices and uh, and the uh, specs in particular, particularly the uh, Ryzen 7 with 8 cores, 16 threads, you would think that they would have some uh, impact on Intel, but oh no. So uh, today, the Core i7-8700K, uh, so the regular Coffee Lake, which is 6 core, 12 threads, is £450 here in the UK. Seems terribly expensive. Uh, the i5 8600K, 310. So if we take the 8700K, 450 pounds, uh, and forget about that anniversary edition, the 8086 for 480, I mean, blimey. It would seem that the i5 9600K, six core, six thread, uh, is gonna be 315 euros. Uh, that sounds like an interesting processor, but the processor of most interest to me is the i7 9700K. That's looking to be 475 euros. And on past form, that's gonna be, you know, 475 pounds and probably dollars uh, because pricing in the UK at the moment is just painful. 475 euros, 450 pounds, the i7-8700K. So that's six cores and 12 threads for the 8700K or eight cores, eight threads, no hyper-threading, remember, on the 9700K at 475, the same money. Uh, that's an interesting trade-off. Uh, no doubt you're going to get the extra cores. Will you get any extra speed? You should get better thermals, but mm, I don't know. I, I somehow expected it to be a tad less. And then that sets the uh, the precedent for the i9-9900K, eight cores, 16 threads. That's the big boy. Apparently, 595 euros. So I call it 600 pounds pretty much in the UK, which will be really ouchy, even if it was 499 pounds which is where i'd hope it would be that would still be a tad more than i'd like but 595 wow i mean that's double the price of the ryzen 7 2700x that's the processors the three processors i'm particularly interested in uh i'm worried about the pricing i'm sure the performance is going to be pretty damn stellar but for those prices it has to be incredible uh, but the chipset the z390 this is looking to be a real damp squib uh, the z390 was supposed we understand to have die shrunk from 22 nanometer down to 14 nanometer that didn't happen because of intel's capacity problems as per blah 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 we said this many times uh, so the z390 chipset is a z370 with added usb 3.1 gen 2 so the motherboard manufacturers don't have to use an add-in controller Okie dokie, you can now have six of those ports on your board and wireless AC. Uh, specifically, wireless AC is the CNVI part, which means essentially um, uh, the IP address, the, the MAC part that goes into uh, the chipset. It basically allows the chipset to uh, communicate more easily with uh, an M.2 card. If you just put the M.2 card uh, wireless AC 9560, 9462, or 9461, if you just put that M.2 card in a regular M.2 slot it has no idea what to do with it uh, with this new bit of chipset it's all good uh, uh, the manufacturers the motherboard manufacturers because I, I said something foolish to one of them I said something like ah well Intel's giving you a free Wi-Fi and they said huh, really a uh, bit of conversation what they're saying is it might take 10 or 20 percent or something like that of the bill of materials for Wi-Fi they've still got to put the Wi-Fi card in it they've still got to sort out antenna for it uh, so it may help a little bit but it's uh, oh, that much of the Wi-Fi is what Intel's actually providing with Z390. Uh, and the proof of this is there are plenty of motherboards, Z390s coming down the pipe, and I've got lists of Z390 boards here from six manufacturers, as you well, six manufacturers in the UK. Uh, Asus, ASRock, uh, Gigabyte, MSI, and then the two smaller brands, EVGA and Supro, uh, looking to get boards from all those manufacturers. Some of them do not have Wi-Fi. The Z390 chipset that comes with Wi-Fi, don't forget, 
they don't all have Wi-Fi on the boards. I don't have a problem with them not supporting Wi-Fi. After all, Wi-Fi on a desktop PC, as far as I'm concerned, is an optional extra. Uh, and there are plenty of other ways, particularly uh, 2.5G, 5G uh, Ethernet. But uh, this chipset giving them Wi-Fi, not so. So really, the Z390 is a Z370 uh, with added USB 3.1 Gen 2. Now, one big question, big, big, big question is, do you require Z390 to run the new 9th gen CPUs? And seemingly, the rumor is, the answer is no. Seemingly, you can get a Z370 board with the correct BIOS and it'll run the 9th gen processors. Until I see it with my own two eyes, well, you know, uh, seeing is believing, as they say, and also making sure the performance is the same. But right now, it's looking like Z390 in and of itself is no big deal. Having said that, we have got some very fruity Z390 motherboards here. Let us start at the budget end of the market. Here we have the ASRock Z390 Pro 4. I received it like this in a bag with this piece of foam. Didn't get a retail box. This is a system integrated part. I guess they get an IO shield. I didn't even receive that. Uh, so here we have it. Uh, now you can see there that's a sticker I guess if I scratch that off underneath it says Z370 it's just a guess uh, because I cannot see there's anything Z390 ish about this a uh, real basic VRM setup a little heatsink with pop pins on it uh, you've got your dual PCI Express slots but there is a uh, nothing to get excited about here including here we have, would you believe, VGA and DVI outputs. So jolly nice if you're looking for something out of the arc. Uh, it does in fairness also have HDMI and a USB Type-C. So we're not, you know, completely Stone Age, uh, but the idea you're going to support a Core i9 with this, for example, I don't see it. Uh, on the other hand, if you're building a dead cheap PC with one of the cheaper, more basic 9th gen CPUs, well, why not? But uh, we can do better than this, can't we? Our second candidate from ASRock is the Z390 Tai Chi. We're familiar with Tai Chi. We like Tai Chi. Tai Chi is good. Uh, on the other hand, it would be more exciting were we to have one of the new Phantom Gaming boards, which replaces Fatality and also apparently has 2.5 gigabit. Uh, nonetheless, Z390 Tai Chi, uh, so it's got that uh, grey aesthetic that we've become used to and the cog design. Uh, we've got, yes, we have got screwed down VRM heat sinks. The price on this board I would estimate to be about £200. And in that slightly curious style, we've got uh, three M.2s, one of which has a heatsink cover and two of which do not. So the ones that are right near your graphics card uh, are likely to get reasonably warm. That therefore will be the prime one. Uh, you've got eight uh, SATA, uh, quad channel memory and all the rest of it as per usual, uh, all looking good. And then on the I.O. Uh, we've got USB Type-C, so loads of USB is the important point, and we've got Wi-Fi. So we've got all the good stuff. Uh, we are here in the mid-range. Asus ROG Strix Z390e, priced around the £200 mark. Asus has a number of very similar models. So this is the E. Uh, they also have an F and an H. And the differences between one model and the next are things like how many of the M.2s have covers on them. In this instance, you can see that we have a full complement of covers on both slots. Uh, it's an understated board, but you do get a decent array of a uh, Features. So you've got the mid-board USB 3.1 Gen 2 and on the I.O. which has an integrated shield you've got Wi-Fi, a Type-C, uh, you've also got DisplayPort and HDMI. So a solid piece of work, nothing too flashy but it's got all the features that you absolutely need for your new PC build. Yet another way to spend £200 or thereabouts, this time Mini ITX, so uh, Zeus ROG Strix Z390i Gaming. We're quite familiar with the Mini ITX boards from Asus. Uh, despite their tiny size, they are solid pieces of work. I mean, the I.O. is, uh, there's everything on there. That is a fully featured motherboard. Uh, you have a decent little heat sink on the VRMs, which is screwed into place as you would hope. One of the restrictions of Mini ITX is you only get the two memory slots. Uh, Asus has come up with something quite clever in conjunction with a couple of memory manufacturers, one of which is G-Skill, which is some double height memory. Uh, so it has uh, two uh, stacks, as it were, of memory chips. So you get the same capacity as you would in four modules. As to how it affects speed and such like, or indeed price, we do not yet know. It's uh, yet another decent mini ITX board that ought to give you all the power of a proper gaming PC in a tiny form factor. 
A Zeus ROG Maximus 11 Hero Wi-Fi, probably around 300 pounds of understated overclocking goodness. Uh, at first glance, you do wonder what you're getting for your money, but when you look more closely, you can see that it's heat sinks galore, it's high-end VRMs, it's an awful lot of VRM hardware. Uh, in addition, you get the usual mid-board connector and such like for USB-C, you get the micro buttons, you're getting the ROG hardware here, that's the thing. You get a reasonable amount of stuff going on on the I.O. panel. In fact, no, <laughs> I'm doing them a disservice. There's a lot of stuff there on the I.O. panel, uh, including some micro buttons. Uh, so uh, apart from the fact you can guarantee there's some RGB going on when you turn the board on, but uh, although it looks quite stealth, uh, no doubt when it comes to overclocking, it's going to live up to the hero name. I'd expect this to be a performance king. Uh, nonetheless, about 300 is my estimate, uh, so you're looking at quite a serious investment. I'm looking forward to getting that one on the test bench, actually. Uh, that should perform better than it looks. A board that surely cannot perform better than it looks, because it looks blooming amazing, is the Maximus 11 formula. Now, my concern here is that my notes say this should be priced around the £400 mark. But I don't know, it might be more, it might be 500, it might be 600. I'm going to say 400, I'm going to cross my fingers, I'm going to hope. Uh, the most obvious visual feature is the EKWB uh, hybrid uh, water block on the VRM. It's worth stressing, that is a VRM cooler. You still need a CPU cooler, whether it's liquid cooling, whether you have a CPU block. And then I suppose you could actually have multiple loops. You could have a loop for your VRMs, a loop for your CPU, a loop for your GPU. That'd be quite novel. Uh, an actual valid use for triple loop cooling. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, you need a CPU cooler, which is why I'm saying £400, whereas if you had a CPU block or a monoblock, it'd be like £500. Uh, you've also got the ROG armour. That means that the lower half of the board is just covered in this sort of uh, shield. If we go down this side of the board around the main power connector, you've got uh, the shielding extends up, so your micro buttons are under there. That I think is a love it or hate it. I quite like that. That's a bit clicky, stealthy, and it works for me. On the other hand, the classic ROG buttons. I also quite like those, the nice round. Anyway, uh, on the I.O. we've got a load of USB. We've got Wi-Fi, we've got Type-C, we've also got micro buttons there. Uh, so in terms of features... Oh, and a backplate. Didn't mention the backplate. Uh, in terms of features, it's good. Clearly, it's a specialist board. Anything that says you must plumb this into a liquid cooler to get the full effect, clearly you're moving it into a niche market. But then anything priced at, as I say, about £400 by its very nature, that's niche. Nonetheless, very high end. And that OLED screen, when that comes into life, that should be a delight to see. Heading off into the stratosphere, we have the MSI Meg Z390 Ace. When I saw the X399 Meg creation recently that was uh, a stellar motherboard absolutely brilliant the reason i say heading off into the uh, ether is because this board has gone on pre-sale briefly in the usa at 419 us dollars so that could easily be 399 pounds here in the uk at the moment dollar pound seems to be about parity a uh, very expensive board almost certainly if it's 350 we'd we'll be getting away with it relatively cheap which is painful to say the least uh, it's 13 phases for power uh, which is very likely three for chip set and then five plus five for the CPU whether that's five doubled or you know sort of five in pairs remains to be seen but that would give you your eight for the controller which would make sense. Uh, OLED screen on the uh, phenomenally solid uh, I.O. area. Uh, you've got a heat pipe linking the two uh, heat sinks on the VRMs which are Yep, they are screwed down. No backplate, curious enough, but they are screwed into place. You've got armor on the memory slots, armor on the graphics slots. Two bare M.2s, but also one that's covered. So again, this curious thing, which is the bottom one has got the uh, heatsink, and yet the uh, the two around the graphics card, not. Uh, a whole host of uh, uh, ports and connectors and headers. You've got uh, micro buttons laid down SATA. We've got that manual overclocking knob that we've seen before. I'm not a fan of that. It engages a preset. You can do it in the BIOS as well. That is something I would prefer to ignore. And on the I.O., loads of features. So that should be a very interesting motherboard to get on the test bench, but it's not going to be cheap. And we finish on a high note with the Z390 Aorus Master from Gigabyte, a board for which I do not have a price, but I'm quite certain it's going to be high. Let's say 300, maybe 350. Uh, it's familiar, actually, from a couple of boards I've seen recently. Uh, their Threadripper High End Extreme and also uh, their high-end uh, X470 
uh, Giga, uh, Ryzen second gen board. Uh, the finned heat sinks immediately look familiar. The VRM hardware is described as 14 phase, so 12 plus 2. Uh, the 12, no doubt, is 6 plus 6, whether that's 6 doubled correctly or sort of 6 in, two, in 6, uh, 12 in 6 pairs remains to be seen, but that would be 8 on the controller, which would make sense. Uh, nonetheless, uh, some manufacturers, you sometimes think they might be fudging it with the power. Uh, Gigamite, their high end boards recently have been uh, impressive. So uh, I'm feeling quietly confident about this. Uh, we've got some cosmetic uh, heat sinks on the uh, M.2s that are very chunky and they fit in with the whole look of the board. Uh, we've got armor absolutely everywhere, micro buttons, headers, and so on and so forth, laid down SATA. Uh, no doubt there's RGB because that's just the way of the thing. Uh, there's nothing there, I'm not, oh, there's an OC button, so presumably presets, all right. I might have to reserve judgment to have seen how that uh, behaves in action. Uh, particularly tricky actually with the new family of CPUs because uh, what do you do with an 8 core Intel? Goodness alone knows. What do you do with soldered Intel? Goodness knows. That might be a really easy into overclocking or it could be uh, a wrong path to take. And then on the IO we've got a whole stack of features. That board is looking interesting and based on recent gigabytes I'm feeling optimistic. That was a tearingly rapid preview of eight Z390 motherboards. Obviously, I'm going to follow up with uh, full reviews once I get my mitts on the processors. That should be happening in the next few days. Uh, the launch, obviously, is a little way off yet, uh, but it's going to be a busy, busy next week or two or three. Not sure I actually had to say when the launch is. I'm going to be vague, week or two or three. Uh, anyway, do make sure you come back to Kit Guru to see those reviews. We've obviously got other products and such like on here as well. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, well, you can still give it a thumbs down. Look around, you find the bell button so you can subscribe and we'll alert you to new videos as they become available. I'm your audit for Kit Guru. This is Z390 being previewed.